Hello there, I'm Spider004. I've been learning about engines a little bit. Now we all know that the bigger the crank, the more force is applied, but the crank tends to spaz a little bit, so sometimes we drift towards smaller cranks because they are more stable, and with an E2 transmission we may be able to overcome the downsides of using a small crank. However, I'm here to tell you that you can use as big of a crank as you want, and it will remain stable forever and ever. How are we going to do this? We are going to use a new system invented by XXX Mags, and I'm going to call it the Sliderless Slider System. If you got a better name, go for it. Now you can see here that there is ropes like a normal engine, and it is acting like they are sliders, but they are clearly not sliders. These this will not spaz unless you do ridiculous things to it and watch. Yep, there's no there's no magic there. It's just one center axis from the crank case to the crank. And you can see the crank is extremely happy, even though it's a large crank. No magic. Also, uh, aside from Side, uh, aside from size of the crank, these piston shapes, I've noticed that different pistons will give you different results. So I have two engines here, and I dynoed them, and the 1x1 PHX plates, everything's the same, and all that weights and everything. You can see 5,000 foot-pounds of torque, and 474 horsepower. Uh, also, I dynoed them at 500 thrust because if I go really high like 7500 it breaks the dyno bad things happen uh, now these jars here I know some people use them because of preference but it turns out that they are actually uh, the best piston there is I've I've like tested pretty much everything except for the really big ones and you can see 534 horsepower 6669 foot-pounds of torque Keep in mind, that is only at 500 thrust. The reason that I test mine so so low also is because I designed them for airplanes, and if I jack the thrust up really high, it kind of has adverse effects to the roll of my plane. Okay, now to the sweet part. Again, this was invented by XXX Mags. I haven't seen anyone else apply this to engines. Okay. We all know about axes, and we probably all know about precision alignment. So get out your precision alignment tool, select point one, select the crank case, select point two, select a piston, and then right click the piston. We are going to get out our R tab. I know for this piston that going up is negative X. And we want a nice wide arc, so I have negative 300x. You can see this lovely line here. Now also you want relative to entity on, of course. I'm going to select point 0.1. And I know that to get to the middle of my crankcase is 17.5y. So you can see 1 is now aligned with two, but it is also aligned with the middle of my crankcase. Okay, now you simply go into the R menu, go to constraints, select axis, select point one and point two for position one and position two, and create the constraint. Do it for the other piston. Now because it's the other side, I need a negative here. See? Point 0.1. Then I go back to 0. Point 0.2. They're aligned. One is aligned with the middle of the crankcase. Constraints. Create constraints. I'll freeze this. And you can see we have a nice, happy, slider-looking system there with no sliders. And the crank will be 
happy. And if you still don't get the concept, I can demonstrate it here. Basically, all we did was we made a really large axis, and because we made a really large axis, this is almost straight. You could extend it out even farther, but on mine, I have a slight curve to counteract the spinning of the crank. It helps with the airplanes. If you have any questions, just ask, but it's a heck of a lot better than sliders, and it has one constraint for piston to keep it on there instead of a slider and a ball socket or a bunch of axes for a slapper and I'll use it for every single engine hereafter again XXX mags made this thanks for watching